हेलो टू ऑल माय स्टोरी लवर्स वेलकम बैक इन स्टोरी टाइम चैनल आई एम पल्लवी रीडिंग इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरीज फॉर यू टुडेज स्टोरी नेम इज द पावर ऑफ फेथ रिटन बाय द ग्रेट सुधा मूर्ति नाउ लेट्स गो टू द स्टोरी अ लॉन्ग टाइम एगो देर लिव एन एबल and just king named dhruvasanti who ruled the kingdom of kosla he had two beautiful wives manorama and leelavati who each had a son named sudarshana and satrujit the boys were only a month apart in age and were raised in a lifestyle befitting their royal status one day the king went to the forest to hunt and was unexpectedly killed by a lion shocked by the unexpected loss the people of the kingdom mourn their king's death tradition dictated that sudarshana who was the older boy and manorama's son ascended the throne however yudajit lilavati's father strongly felt that his grandson shatrujit was better suited for the crown yudajit was a clever king and after some thought he arrived in kosla with his army to invade the kingdom's capital city of ayodhya in an effort to make shatrujit the new crown prince virasena the manorama's father countered the attack and stormed the city with his own forces in support of his grandson sudarshana the two sides battled each other and virasena was killed when manorama learned of her father's death she became terrified she was certain that her son's life was in danger in ayodhya so she escaped with him on the banks of the river ganga and river sage named bharadwaja took pity on both the queen and the young prince and provided them with care and shelter with sudarshana nowhere in sight shatrujit safely ascended the throne and became the king of kosla one day yudajit shatrujit's grandfather learned that sudarshana was under the protection of bharadwaja he thought of killing him so that the first born prince could not pose a threat to the throne however the kingdom's wise minister advised him not to proceed with this plan while the boy was under the hermit's protection in the hermit's ashram sudarshana heard a fascinating mantra one day however later he could recall only the first word of the mantra and began chanting it repeatedly clean clean the little did not know the word signified the scat devi years went by and the chanting became a part of sudarshana's daily routine devi who had finally noticed the young boy and his innocent devotion appeared before him she blessed him with a divine bow and arrow and promised her protection to him meanwhile sasikala the beautiful princess of kashi an ardent devotee of devi heard about sudarshana and devi's blessing to him instantly she felt a connection to him and fell in love despite never having met him subahu 
Sashikala's father had arranged her swamvara, a grand gathering of prospective husbands from whom the bride would choose a groom, and invited many princes to attend. But Sashikala abruptly informed him that her groom would only be Sudarshana. This upset her parents. Sudarshana was a prince without a kingdom and any supporters, but what disturbed them most was his powerful enemy and half-brother Shatrujit. They advised Sashikala, Please, dear daughter, you must change your mind for the sake of your future. Sashikala, however, remained firm, unwavering in her decision. Reluctantly, Subahu sent a trusted messenger to the forest to invite Sudarshana to the upcoming Swayamvara. Though the prince's parents still hoped that one of the other princes attending the event would change their daughter's mind. On receiving the invitation, Sudarshana grew eager to attend the event, but his mother, the queen in exile Manorama, Stop him, afraid of what lay ahead. Oh, my dear child, please don't go, she said. I know you have received a royal invitation, but it was sent just days before the Swamvara. That in itself implies that you are not important suitor for the princess. I am sure that Chaturjit will also be there and I don't want to lose you the way I lost my father. Sudarshana smiled. Mother, please don't worry. Devi is with me. I belong to the clan of warriors as do you. It is perfectly acceptable to be afraid but it shouldn't stop us from pursuing our path. We must push ahead. Both you are my precious son, remarked Manorama sadly. Sensing that her son would not let this go, she said, Well, if you must go, then I will come too. Sudarshana so agreed and soon the mother and the son journeyed to Kashi. When they reached, King Subahu welcomed them with great respect, honor and and hospitality. The next morning, Sudarshana ran into his half-brother Shatrujit at the Swayamvara. Shatrujit was accompanied by his grandfather Yudajit. Why are you here? Shatrujit asked. Barely hiding his contempt, this is not the place for you. You don't even have an army. I am here with Devi and hers is the only support I need, responded Sudarshana. Just then, Sasikala entered the hall with a garland. Softly, she said to her unhappy parents standing nearby, I don't know how many princes have come here today expecting my hand in marriage, but the truth is that it doesn't matter at all. My decision has already been made. I am going to marry Sudarshana. The helpless and anxious king knew that he had to call off the Swamvara immediately. He made a loud announcement. My daughter has decided to marry Sudarshana. Hence, the Swamvara will no longer take place. We welcome you as our esteemed guest and I request each of you to accept a few gifts. Please have a meal with us before you journey back to your own kingdoms. Yudajit became livid. He yelled, If your daughter had already chosen Sudarshana, why did you invite the other princess? This is an insult to all of us and I will not tolerate it. I am going to abduct your daughter and forced her to marry my grandson, Shatrujit. King Subahu grew pale. His army was no match for the strength and skill of Yudajit's forces. So he turned to his daughter. My dear child, 
do you see the situation you have put us in i beseech you please change your mind and peace will prevail i'm sorry dear father but i must abide by my decision responded sasikala on undeterred she approached sudarshana and garlanded him indicating to the guest present she was now be thrown to him in an instant the hall turned into a battleground and yudhajit and shatrujit soldiers attacked the kingdom's guards with great force the other party joined one of the two sides and the battle seemed like it would never end suddenly devi appeared in the room out of the nowhere mounted on a ferocious tiger she wore a red sari sported a garland of mandara flowers around her neck and had weapons clutched in her multiple hands it was almost as if sudarshana instinctively knew what to do next he brought out his divine bow and began shooting arrows in quick succession when the soldiers in the room saw devi they put their arms down and retreated yudhajit however too caught up in his desire to slay sudarshana did not recognize her to him she was just a woman he roared at his soldiers why are you cowards feeling at the sight of a woman surround sudarshana and kill him with a slight smile and without a word devi killed both yudhajit and shatrujit with her perfectly aimed arrows the story of devi's power and her execution of justice quickly spread everywhere in due course of time sudarshana was crowned the king of kosla he remained a devotee of devi and dedicated one day a year in his kingdom to the goddess this is the end of the story do you like it then comment it and subscribe our channel bye bye